So today we're going to be discussing the body. Most of us are lucky enough if we have a child's understanding of all of the parts of our body. We know all the words, but we don't always know in our mind where all these places are. And so sometimes when you go to a yoga class, the yoga teacher will tell you to move your knee or move your hips or your shoulder or your chest. And sometimes those places are somewhat vague and you don't know exactly what they mean. But when we think about the body from the, an intellectual point of view, we all know there's a skeleton and most of us have taken at least some rudimentary biology class and we know the different uh, elements of a skeleton and we know the muscular body and some of us have had injuries in the muscular body so maybe we know some muscles more than others and we know that there is a nervous system that uh, is part of our anatomical physical body and for creative minded people it's often discussed about the neuroscience of neurotransmitters in the brain again all of these things are related to emotional health emotional well-being but they all take place on the physical layer in yoga, we talk about the five sheaths of, sheaths of the body. And uh, the word for that is often koshas. So the five koshas of the body. And this is a concept that moves us from an objective sensibility of the body to a subjective understanding of the body. And what I mean by this is it's, it's our experience of the body. It doesn't necessarily mean that that equates directly anyway to a anatomical representation of the physical body, but it's our experience of the body as lived human beings. So each of the koshas work from the outer layer down towards the inner layer. So you have the Anamaya Kosha, which is the physical body, and then you have the Pranayama Kosha, which is your life force and your energy and chakras. And you go down through each of these different chakras, I mean, each of these different Koshas. And it's not our purpose today to learn and understand each of the Koshas because that study alone can be a whole course, more than 10 minutes. But for today's purposes, the understanding is that we can experience all of these different layers of our body and that things can, pat patterns, the survival patterns that we've talked about can be created on these layers, on these subjective layers, which will have an implication for the physical layers, of course, but just understanding that there is a subjective map of your inner self. And so these koshas are like onions each one is embodied in the other. So from a subjective point of view, you have many, many layers, five layers, and within those layers, there are multiple things going on. And then we go back to understanding the body from a more Western viewpoint, which is anatomical alignment, a mathematical understanding of the 
proportions and relations of the body. And you combine that with the yogic understanding of the sheaths of the body and the energies of the body. And you can see yourself from a geometrical point of view. So why am I talking about all this? When you do yoga asana, you've probably been to a yoga class and done some form of yoga asana, a dog stretch, a triangle pose. Each of those, yes, it addresses the physical body. Yes, it addresses the muscular body. Yes, it begins to get into the nervous system. But even more, it goes into the layers of the subjective experience of being human. And so we can use geometry to help access those deeper and deeper layers. We start from the outer layer, from the Anamaya Kosha, and then we work deeper and deeper and deeper. So that when you ultimately are doing a yoga pose, you are creating a container for the breath, the mind, and all of these various energies that are circulating throughout you. So the point of yoga and yoga asana and the postures is not to perfect or be athletic or tone the body. Those things are all results of doing the postures but the ultimate reason to do the postures is to create the container in which the mind and the breath can circulate and both stabilize and align those internal energies with the external energies of the universe, which are ultimately the same thing. So when you go back to listening to the cues of a yoga teacher, move your left foot in, your right foot out, extend your arm, go through your fingers, you are, of course, moving your anatomical body but you also want to be connecting to the subjective and you do that often through the imagination. So remember, when you're doing a yoga posture, it is not just on the physical level, it is on many layers. And using your imagination instead of just your intellect to connect to those various layers of yourself will deepen and enrich your practice. And this is especially important for the creative mind because that will connect you to the way in which your creativity can be unleashed and your mental wellness can be enhanced. So that's enough for today. And we'll go, we'll talk more about the body tomorrow.